at every event in every corner of the country. Um, everything's horrible. How do we keep going? Isn't it pointless? Uh, what do we do? Uh, and so forth. And you know, it's a little hard for me to answer. Uh, so I haven't been doing it for 30, 40 years, so I can't say how I did that. I haven't done that. Um, but you know, from my point of view, I don't need to see victory around the corner. I don't need to see signs of success. I don't need to be encouraged. It doesn't interest me at all. I, I love the, the, the graffiti that you'll find in South America that says, let's save our pessimism for better times. I, I think the logical thing to do is to work hardest when things are grimmest. That being said, nobody else agrees with me on that. 99% of humanity prefers to work hardest when victory's nearest and to do the least when it's most needed. And for that reason, I, I've, see, I've seen you. Can I just answer his question, please? That's a different workshop. Well, I, can I answer his question for two more minutes and then okay. go to you? Uh, because if I don't, we're going to get that question ten more times. So uh, one thing that is very helpful, I think, is to try to inform each other to the extent possible of to what extent we are uh, a huge majority. Uh, chapter 22 in this lovely book uh, goes through public opinion polls showing the, the dozens of issues in which we think we're a fringe leftist kook minority because our televisions tell us so every day and we're actually a, an overwhelming majority of the American public. Uh, and to inform each other of how much activism uh, and successful activism is happening every day and every week because our televisions will never tell us that either. Uh, it's not nearly enough. It's not that everything's hunky-dory. But if you need to know that there are a lot of people uh, out there doing what needs to be done and winning, uh, then, then we need to talk to each other about that and we need to make better use of good media outlets and blogs and radio shows to know about that. Uh, and when the president announces he's not going to put bases in the Czech Republic and Poland and everybody tells us that this is just kissing up to Russia and nobody tells us that five people in the Czech Republic stopped it and overthrew their government and made it impossible for him to put that base there if he wanted to. Right? This is what media in a democratic small d society would do. They would tell you about the role of citizens in when decisions happen. When the army decided last month that they're not going to put video game killing arcades in shopping malls anymore, and they didn't tell you that that's because people protested the one in Philadelphia so effectively that it that it gave the, the army such a bad name that they aren't going to do. You know, we have to tell each other. There's not going to be a day when they say, "Okay, we're now announcing this is the day when you all stopped an attack on Iran," but we have stopped an attack on Iran for years now. And we have to keep it up. We have to have eternal vigilance on that because they will keep pushing. But we are winning. We are winning. We have 90% with us because we've been exposing the lies on Iraq and because we have persuaded the entire country to be against these wars. We now have a majority against the war in Afghanistan right. as well. Uh, if, if you need encouragement, I'll give you hours and hours of encouragement. But I would, you know, perhaps in vain, urge you to drop this sort of should we be encouraged or should we despair nonsense and just work for what we have an absolute moral duty to work for until we die regardless. Yeah. Well, I'm Bruce. Margaret Mead. Never underestimate the power of a small group of people to affect change. I'm paraphrasing. It's the only thing that ever has. I mean, it's, it's always been true. And, that, and that's a good workshop, but I will have I want to deal. I, you mentioned uh, Representative Lujan, and I stepped out for a minute. And I don't know if you you seem to want to say something about our congressional leaders, and I just wanted to see if you had something that you. Were, why did you ask us that? Well, I proposed that for the last fifteen or twenty minutes of this workshop, which we'll get to fairly soon, that we try to put together a plan for a specific action. And one proposal would be an action related to Congressman Lujan. But I, the floor is open for other proposals and lines of thinking and brainstorming uh, right now. Yes, sir. I just had a, this question of priorities. That's what you're saying. This 
focus on the congressional enacting this section of our ideas. My question I want to ask you now is in the context about the National Emergency Act and continuity of government, because that's not on the radar. That seems to give a blank check to what's been going on in the last nine years. So I wonder if you could speak of that. It needs to be addressed. It's somewhat secretive. We don't know exactly. All right, what's I don't know if everyone understands what they need to do in the background. Well, when this is not brand new, but when Bush and Cheney were around, they developed orders that would effectively allow the president to declare a national emergency and allow the president in a time of national emergency to set up a new government and essentially run everything without the pretense of, of a Congress as a, as, a diff, as a separate branch um, to have a, a shadow government um, for a time of crisis, um, which is absolutely unconstitutional, uh, and to be and, and beginning with the fact that this is done in secret uh, and done by the president uh, without Congress, um, and so it, it, we we have to we have to sort of get away from the idea of reforming the CIA and ban secret agencies, ban secret government, ban secret laws, and insist that in a representative government, it all be public. Uh, and then we don't have these problems. I, I put it at the top of the list. Yes? OK, this might be a, a Bruce-like question, somewhere maybe between a Holly and a Bruce-like question. Well, if we only get two of those, we'll be sent well, right. No, no, it's interesting, because uh, I mean, I can say that I was pretty happy when old Barack Obama was elected. A lot of people have been and continue to be that it's him that and that Nobel Peace Prize yesterday was kind of fun too. Okay, I'm, I'm being I'm being glib here with the word with the word. What you're saying and what we apparently have to come to believe and accept is that nothing really has changed nor will it change. The system goes on. In the same way. Well, I would leave out the nor will it change bit. It will but change if we force if it to we change. Don't do something. So I guess how do you how do you how how do you get at, at those of us who really want to give the guy the benefit of a doubt of a doubt for a while because that was a rough eight years. Okay, and again we are maybe twice your age at this point. What do you how do you how do you how do you get at that in well, terms of of actual of real political action? And the other thing I want to say to Bruce is my, my daughter's 22 years old. She would no more be in here with us this morning than fly. But if we did put some good stuff together for her to go out and do, I mean, there were a zillion people out on the steps of the Roundhouse yesterday in support of uh, 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 Santa Fe Public Schools and unions and dealing with the legislature around budget cuts on October 17th. So I absolutely believe if we do things that people can physically engage in, yeah. I believe they will, and I believe younger people will too. Yeah, I just well, think it's, you know. If I talked to your daughter for a while, she would probably convince me of some things that she was right on and I was wrong about. And Dick Cheney's a lot older than me, and I think he's wrong about a hell of a lot of things. So I don't think age is actually a determinant of who's right about anything. No, it's more where you're going to spend your time, is all I mean. Well, I, uh, I, I think you're, respectfully, I think you're fundamentally wrong and incredibly self-destructively misguided to think that it's appropriate to give someone the benefit of doubt. I think that is the appropriate reaction to a coup, not an election. I think that following an election, you have made a deal, and your part of the bargain is to get out there and tell them how the hell you want to be represented. I think that before the most recent election, a minority wanted out of Afghanistan. Now, a majority wants out of Afghanistan. Well, to have someone who says openly, as Barack Obama said on Tuesday, I'm going to ignore the Congress, and I'm going to ignore the public, and I'm going to do what's right for the nation. And people applaud, oh, thank you for ignoring us, oh, thank you for ignoring us, as if the public is some sort of corrupting force like the money or the media. No, that is the most anti-democratic attitude imaginable. We don't want to be ignored. We want to be represented for exactly where we are in this moment, not where we were before the last election, not where we were 20, 20 years ago, where we are right now today. And how do we get represented by people in Washington for who we are right now today? Not by 
begging and pleading.